Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Today we are going to see the difference between the balanced growth approach and the unbalanced growth approach. As you all know, we have done several videos on balanced growth and unbalanced growth. I mean, the various theories on balanced growth and unbalanced growth. But in this video, we are specifically looking at the difference between the balanced growth approach and the unbalanced growth approach. Let's get started. Coming to the concept of balanced growth, this is something which would be occurring when the output in capital stock increases at the same rate. But when it comes to development economics, balanced growth approach refers to a simultaneous and coordinated expansion of different sectors that we can have in the economy. We have agriculture sector, service sector, industrial sector, extra in our economy. And whenever we go for a simultaneous and coordinated expansion of these sectors, we call it as balanced growth. Coming to the propounders of balanced growth, there have been so many people who are behind it. One of the important economists who have gone for the contribution of balanced growth approach is Ragnar Nas. He says that government of any underdeveloped economy needs to make some large investments. And this can be done in the number of industries in a coordinated and simultaneous manner. And he was saying that <clears throat> this will be enlarging the size of the market. This will be increasing the productivity and also this will be providing incentive for the private sector to make investment. He was always interested in connecting the various sectors of the economy. He says that. It is always important to expand the different sectors simultaneously because there always exists some intersectoral relationship. We, as a result, we need to go for intersectoral balance. He was identifying the relationship between different sectors like agriculture sectors connected to industrial sector. Industrial sector is related to service sector. Service sector is related to agriculture sector again. And with respect to the supply of raw materials from one sector to another and with respect to the creation of market for the uh, products for, of the other sectors, we can see that there exists interdependence of different sectors and that was being identified by NERDS and this is something which laid a foundation for his balanced growth approach. Moving to the role of the state in balanced growth approach, he always says that, Nuts always says that the subject of balanced growth, this is something that would be promoting development and this is not a matter that would be concerning the economists but that is always an administrative problem because it is a government that would be allocating the resources for different needs and wants of the economy. And he says that whenever an economy goes for balanced growth, that will be enlarging the size of the market that will be increasing the productivity that would be increasing the returns of scale and eventually it will be promoting the development but balanced growth theory was not free from criticism it was being criticized from various points of view and one of the famous criticism that has been given to balanced growth approach is done by Hushman, albert of Hushman, and he had put forward his own way of explaining growth strategy and that is what we can call in the name of unbalanced growth approach. Fishman always gave importance to the fact that underdeveloped economies always suffer from lack of resources. As a result of shortage of resources in underdeveloped economies, it is not possible for these economies to go for a balanced growth. So Fishman was saying that an underdeveloped nation can undertake some large investment in some strategically important industries. It is not possible for these nations to go for simultaneous and coordination, coordinated expansion of various sectors. But it is important for these economies to select some strategically important core industries and to invest heavily upon them. To quote Hishman, he says that if a country were to ready to apply the doctrine of balanced growth, then it would not be an underdeveloped economy in the first place. So, the theory of unbalanced growth is something that is opposite to the doctrine of balanced growth. Here we are not going for simultaneous expansion of all sectors, but we are going for 
unbalanced growth in a systematic manner. Hirschman was saying that we have to go for unbalancing the economy. Development should take place by unbalancing the economy. How can that be done? We have to select some strategically important industries, some core industry, and we need to invest heavily upon them. And for this, he had gone for two approaches. One is called the socially overhead capital, social overhead capital or SOC. The other one is directly productive activities or BP. The former would create external economies, while when it comes to the latter, this would be appropriating external economies. I would like to ask you a question. Are you an economic student? If you are. This is for your information that I'm saying. We have launched our app. You can download it from Play Store. Learn Economy app is available now. So you can use that app for the considering question papers, getting notes, making discussions, etc. So that's all about today's video. And you can also be a part of my Telegram channel and Telegram group to discuss your doubts. And you can like, share and subscribe to this channel for more videos. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.